Today's lesson is going to be about Delphi and databases, particularly when we've got multiple tables that are linked, and this is a part of the Grade 12 IT CAP syllabus. So we have done two videos where we've added a record and deleted a record. We're now going to do the final step, which is updating a record. What do we do when we want to update a record? And this is probably the easiest of the three. Things to remind ourselves, we are dealing with linked tables, which means there is a connection between them. And you've got your two main types of table, your parent table and your child table. In this case, if you remember, uh, like from the previous examples, we have an activity table, which has details about activities. That is the parent table in this case, because there is nothing in this table that needs that is dependent on another table. We do have the learner table, which is a child table, and as you can see, there is activity name, which is a foreign key, which gets it from the activity table. And because of this connection, the learner table, the details that are in this field over here, are dependent on the activity table's details. So this is dependent on activity. In other words, this is the child of the parent. Just like you are dependent on your parents for money and for housing, so is the learner dependent on the activity. Some extra steps to be aware of when we are updating a record. It's always a good idea to give feedback. That's the, because it's a simple procedure that we're going to be doing today, a simple few steps. The main thing is always provide the user with feedback so that they are aware of what is happening. For this example, we're going to keep with that learner and activity example. We're going to look at this case where we've got all the details of the learner from the learner table, and we've got all the details of the activity over here. What I want to do is I want the user to be able to select an activity and then add a voucher amount. And what will happen is that amount will be added to the amount paid by each learner who is doing that activity. So in other words, if we select archery and we put 50 Rand here, and we update the learners, which I've probably spelt wrong there, I should probably put an R there. The, if we do that, then all of the learners that are taking archery will then get 50 Rand added onto their current amount. So for example, this person will go from 45 to 95. Um, this person here will go from 20 to 70. So that's the example that we want to actually execute today. I just quickly changed that update learner so it looks better. It was irritating me there. I'm a bit OCD in that case. But here we go. We got the update learners. We're going to do the code for this button. So I'm going to double click on it. And here's where we write the code. Now remember, all of our connections, all of our um, the things that we need to connect with the database are via this DM excursion module. There's our connection with our two ADO tables, which are connected to the activity table and the learner table. So we are going to be working with that. So that's why we're going to use the with DM excursion so that we can save ourselves a lot of code when typing all this stuff out. So we're going to do that today. There we go. Now the first step that we're going to probably need to do is we are going to have to look at which activity the user selected. So we're going to need to get the one that he selected from TBL activity and probably store that somewhere. So on, I'm going to make a variable for a string variable which is going to store what activity it is. S act, which is of type string. And I'm going to say, well, this S act will get its details from the TBL activity table. Oh, let's get that out of the way so I can see what I'm writing. And we're getting it from the activity name. Activity name, if I remember correctly. Let's go just double check ourselves. There we go, activity name. So that's where I get activity name. So that gets the, f the one that he selected. So we're going to store that in S act. Now that we've done that, I'm now going to filter the learner table so that I can only see the people that are doing the activity that I selected over here. So we're going to do a little filter. So now we are working with TBL learner, which is not coming up. Let's find out why it's not doing that. It's probably not working because I haven't got a begin here for this with. So remember the with statement needs its own begin and end so we can do multiple items. Let's see if that works now. There we go, there's learner. So we are now going to do a filter. Okay, so we're first going to set the filter to false. And then we're going to change our filtered string, tbl learner dot 
filter. Now the string is going to be, we are want to filter based on the activity. Here we go across here, the activity name of the learner table. So the activity name must equal to what is in the variable s act. But because it's a string, we need to put quotes around it, but then our quotes interfere, so we have to use that quoted string so that it puts in quotes for us that won't interfere with these quotes when I write strings. And then we will say tbl learner dot filtered equals true. Once that's done, it should do a simple little filter. And we just wanted to maybe show a message here to tell the user just so that you know this is how many records will be edited or updated. So show message. What message could we say? We could say, please take note. I should probably get a variable to store how many records are going to be changed. I'm going to call it rnum. It's a very f fancy name. rnum, very fancy. Let's go rnum. We're going to make this equal to tbl learner dot record count. That will tell us how many records are in this filter because we filter it, so it'll only show me the records that are being displayed there. And then I'm going to convert this into a string. I num and say records will be updated. As I said before, it's a good idea to always give your user feedback just so that they're aware of what's happening. Let's just test to see if this works and hopefully we can just see if the filter is working and from there we can do the editing. So let's just run the program. So we're going to select a activity. So I'm selecting archery update the learners and it tells us there are 12 records will be updated and there we can see all the archery records so we know our filter is all working okay now that we've got it all filtered now we need to get that value from that edit box over here because that's the amount that we are going to edit their records with the, the amount that they've paid so i'm going to make another variable here should we assume that it's a real? I don't know. Let's let's just assume that it'll always be an integer value, so we'll make it an integer. So let's call it our voucher. Obviously, if it was a real, you just make it a real. Um, just to make my life easier, I prefer working with integers. They're far less complicated. So our voucher is now going to be whatever is in that edit control, but we must convert from a string to an int. Edt paid. So that's how much they're going to be paid. Dot text. So there we've got the value from the edit box. We are, so now we want to update those records. So we're going to simply go through each and every record that is in that filter. So we are going to start with the very first one. So it should be at the very first one already when it, we did the filter. We are going to say while tbl learner dot end of file while not while we are not at the end of the file while we are not at the end of the file. What do we want to do? Well, we have a few things we want to do. So I'm going to put a begin and an end here, just so that we know what we what this end is for. End of while. The first thing we will need to do is we need to put the TBL learner table into the edit state so that it knows that we are only editing records. So it allows us access to edit these records. So now that it's in the edit state, now we can change this particular record only, the one that we're in, which will be the first one. So what do we want to do? We want to take this value of voucher and add it on to what is already in the value for amount paid. So whatever the value is for amount paid, we want to add that voucher amount on. So I'm going to say, okay, well, that TBL learner amount paid, hopefully I spelled that correctly, is going to equal whatever is in it already plus the amount from the R voucher. There we go. So hopefully that will work. Once that's done and we've updated it and we're happy, you can do a whole lot of updates here depending on what the question requires of you. In this case, we just want one simple thing. I'm now going to say TBL learner dot post so that we can post those results to the table and then once we've done that before we move on we actually need to okay we've done that record we're happy with it it's all been edited we now move on to the next record once we've done that that will go through the whole loop and hopefully edit all of them once that is done then 
it's a good idea once we finish this loop we are finished editing so therefore we can take that learner filter off because we don't need it anymore so I'm say filtered equals false and because we've been editing random records here and there um, we've taken the filter off just in case it's, it's, it's the point is at a random record I'm just gonna say let's just make it the first record so that it knows that it must go to the top of the table and then once that's done, then it's pretty much all that we need to do. Maybe we want to display another message. I'm going to use the show message to confirm that all the, the records were changed. Records have been. So let's change this to have been updated so that the user is aware that that actually happened. So let's have a look and see if it works. Hopefully there's no errors in the code. No errors. That's always a good sign. So we're going to run. We're going to select archery. And I'm going to put in 50. Hopefully if it works, that 45 should change to a 95. And that should also change to 95. And that should change to a 70 if it works. So it asks us, will these records be updated? We say, yes, okay. 12 records have been updated. And we click OK. And we go look there. And there, archery is 95. There's another 95. There's the 70. So there you can see the records have been updated. So as you can see, this is quite an easy example. Nothing too complicated about it. The key thing to remember is to, when you are going through this, always give user, the user feedback. And remember to, once you're going through each and every record, you, can, you must edit, put it in the edit mode, do the changes that you want, then put it in the post mode. So it's takes those changes and puts them in the database and then move to the next record and there we go it should all work quite nicely for you if you missed the other two videos on adding a record and deleting a record go to our channel you'll see all those videos are there along with a whole lot of other resources which hopefully can be useful for you if you're an IT or a CAT student also follow us on Twitter so that you can keep up to date whenever we update new videos just like this video is about updating so make sure you go to our Twitter account and remember don't do it the long way do it the Mr. Long Way the examples from today's video come from the grade 12 Delphi eNotes from Study Opportunities. These eNotes are available in 2014. In 2015, they'll be releasing a textbook for the grade 12 RT CAP syllabus. If your teacher is interested in getting these textbooks, they can go to the website that is listed there.